Dinosaurs. For the longest time, they've been the apple of the scientific world's eye. And it's not really hard to blame them, given that some of them are absolutely massive, some of them are absolutely terrifying, some of them are absolutely dorky. I mean, look at this guy. And pretty much all of them were found by digging in the dirt. And it's not just dinosaurs. All sorts of prehistoric life is of interest to people, including young Deluxe, who may have watched the Jurassic Park franchise one too many times growing up. But when I went from dino-obsessed kid to sports-obsessed teenager, there really weren't many areas of overlap, and that always confused me. Here are these oftentimes menacing, other times beautiful creatures that might as well be mythical to some people, but they actually existed, roaming our world for ages until they all just disappeared. And some colleges would rather call themselves the Aggies. Yes, I'm talking to you, Utah State. Raptors was right there. Obviously, there are a few teams that break this trend, most notably the Toronto Raptors of the NBA, who decided on Raptors as a nickname in 1995 based on the popularity of, of course, Jurassic Park. And they've kept the name ever since. They're not the only Canadian team with a theropod as their mascot, as the University of Calgary has called their sports teams the Dinos since at least 1964. Recently, Tri-C Cuyahoga Community College in Ohio renamed their sports programs to the Triceratops, and a Triceratops named Dinger is the costume mascot for the Colorado Rockies, since a Triceratops fossil was found while excavating land for the stadium. It's not just dinosaurs, either. Purdue Fort Wayne has been going by the Mastodons for as long as they've had athletics, since 1970, due to the fact that a Mastodon fossil was uncovered while they were building the campus itself. They're similar to Amherst College in Massachusetts, calling themselves the Mammoths, and Maranatha Baptist University in Wisconsin going by the Sabercats since 2014. But this is our sample size. This little representation, in a place on the planet where dinosaurs are probably the most popular. I mean, seriously, the Rocky Mountain region of the United States is flush with fossils of some of the most notorious Jurassic and Cretaceous dinosaurs in history, especially along the Morrison and Hell Creek formations. Tyrannosaurus rex, Allosaurus, Utah Raptor, Triceratops, Brachiosaurus, Stegosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus. Heck, if you want to go beyond dinosaurs, Mosasaurus, Mammoths, Pterosaurs, they were all over the place. And yet seemingly no college wants to use prehistoric life as their mascot. So as an adult, the question has continued to astound me. Why, especially now, are dinosaurs and other prehistoric life avoided so much from a mascot nickname standpoint in sports, but things like eagles, bears, and wildcats aren't. What's the deal there? This is a question I sought to ask alongside a friend of mine and fellow dino nerd Empire, who has a few videos on his channel before his switch to football that cover prehistoric life. Well, the first answer we discovered is fitting for the dinosaurs. They're in the wrong time. When dinosaurs were first discovered in the 1800s all the way through the mid 1900s, they were thought of to be big, dumb, bumbling lizards. They all died out, after all. Have to be pretty stupid for that to happen. They were interesting, sure, but they weren't anywhere near the giant, terrifying presences we think of some dinosaurs to be today, and they certainly weren't titans in media like they are today. Even during the Bone Wars of the mid-1800s, they didn't carry as much cultural weight, and T-Rex's discovery in the early 1900s brought more of a, hey, that dude's pretty big mentality instead of, that is a terrifying killing machine, thank God it is gone. That was until after World War II, during what's called the Dinosaur Renaissance. The discovery of one particular dinosaur, the raptor Deinonychus, in 1969, indicated that dinosaurs weren't just commonly bumbling idiots. They could be terrifying, efficient, warm-blooded predators as well. They could be monsters. That was something scientific fiction writer Michael Crichton caught onto with his book Jurassic Park, published in 1990. The film adaptation in 1993, helmed by Steven Spielberg, was so revolutionary and popular, it almost single-handedly changed how movies were done. CGI and the summer blockbuster were never the same after Jurassic Park released, and neither was the public perception about dinosaurs, which spiked considerably after its release. So that gives us a timeline for the mentality switch around dinosaurs to take place at the earliest in the 1970s, but more likely in the 80s or 90s. By that point, most of the colleges at the Division I level had already chosen their mascots and had decided on things other than dinosaurs or other prehistoric life. For example, Montana State, which is considered one of the most prominent paleontology universities in the country, had already settled on the nickname of Bobcats by at least the 1920s. That puts them way ahead of the shift on prehistoric life. Other paleontology universities paint similar pictures. U Chicago coined the name of their athletics programs in the late 1800s, and their paleontology department also started around the same time. But knowledge of dinosaurs was so limited at that point 
that they might as well have called themselves a color, which they did. I've had a commenter point out that Western Michigan, before they made the switch from Hilltoppers to Broncos in 1939, considered changing their name to Mastodons, but I haven't found anything on the internet to verify that. I'm sure it's true, and it's sad, because Mastodons is cooler than Broncos in my opinion. We have to remember why schools choose particular mascots though. They aren't just cool names to give their sports teams. They're nicknames for the group of people who go to that university. They help represent their spirit, their values, and especially their culture. That's why, say, a team in Arizona might call themselves the Sun Devils, based on the oppressive Arizona heat the state is known for, but also instilling a sense of tenacity and cunning in their students, like a devil would have. If dinosaurs and prehistoric life were considered to be stupid for their own extinctions, however wrong that might be, that's a quality no college starting up an athletics program in the 50s or 60s or earlier would want their students to be slapped with. Even though a majority of these colleges in the Rockies are located in areas where dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures roamed, they just simply found more interesting mascots to go with. On top of that, there just haven't been many universities in the Rockies region founded since 1993, the release of Jurassic Park and our proposed height of dinosaur mania, that have started sports programs. Maybe in the future that'll change, but as of right now, the areas of the country that might find cultural and historical significance with dinosaurs haven't really found themselves in situations to have them as mascots. But the second reason why prehistoric creatures might not be used much for mascots? People just don't find them as cool. The University of Calgary's T-Rex mascot lost in the first round of a mascot popularity tournament. Dinger, the Rockies mascot, gets hate year round. They're seen as dorky, dweebish, and too much like Barney the Dinosaur. That extends beyond the costumed mascots, too, just a nickname for the athletics teams in general. That's why we have more teams named Spiders, friggin' creepy crawlies than dinosaurs in the NCAA. It's easier to identify, on the average, with things people can go to the zoo and see, like wildcats or tigers or bears, than something they have to use their imagination to see based on bones at the local museum. And if you're gonna be using your imagination already, you might as well be using devils, or dragons, or angry preachers. And since most of these mascots have to do with the local area around them, it might be easier for students to identify with them considering one of these things is apt for the college now, and the other was apt for an era where humans didn't even exist and the landscape was entirely different. That all just raises the question still. If we were to change some mascots in college sports, what would some fitting names be? Now, I know I'm a little knowledgeable on the subject, but I know that Empire is a lot more knowledgeable than I am, so I decided to defer to his expertise on the subject and see what he could come up with. Let's begin with the most important athletic department in the nation, maybe the world, the Florida Gators. Now, there isn't a ton in the local fossil record to work with here, but the northern parts of the state have a decent collection of Ice Age era remains, including this guy right here, Aramatherium. Greek for steppe beast, Remetherium was a five-ton relative of today's sloth. That I think would be perfect as Florida's mascot should they choose to go more prehistoric. Alternatively, although fossils aren't known to be found in Florida, the Cretaceous-era giant alligator Dinosuchus would make a fine selection too. I have a massive bone to pick specifically with these two schools. They sit right on the mecca of dinosaur paleontology, and we got the bobcats and grizzlies, cats and bears. Montana's world-famous Hell Creek Formation houses a vast array of Cretaceous dinosaurs from armored ankylosaurs to giant hadrosaurs, but for the two biggest teams in the state, there's only two right answers, Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops, two of the most recognizable prehistoric animals of all time, a predator-prey rivalry 66 million years old repeated in Montana's largest sports rivalry. The Colorado schools find themselves in a similar situation to the Montana schools, sitting within the same state as another famous dinosaur hotspot, the Jurassic Morrison Formation. Now, I actually like both the buffaloes and rams as mascots, but should they want to, for some reason, drop them and go prehistoric, my suggestion is similar to the Montana schools. Play on a prehistoric rivalry found in nature between the armored stegosaurs and the predatory allosaurs, both found in the Morrison Formation. Rounding out my list of world-famous fossil beds, the La Brea Tar Pits outside Los Angeles are home to thousands of Pleistocene mammals, entombed in a giant bubbling vat of tar. Close by in North LA, we have UCLA 
home to thousands more mammals entombed in student debt. All while they cheer for, wouldn't you know it, another bear mascot. Instead, I choose a La Brea regular and the California state fossil, the Smilodon or saber-toothed cat. I hate the bulldog as a mascot. It's just about the least athletic dog I can think of, yet it is so widespread in college sports. So, to close out, I've taken it upon myself to give suggestions for every single FBS Bulldog program, hoping at least one sticks. As a longtime Georgia resident, I can confidently say that we don't really have a ton of fossils, owing mostly to the state being submerged in water for most of Earth's history. But we do have a plethora of shark teeth from various different eras, and that's what I've gone with here. If we want to get more specific, the Megalodon would probably be a popular choice. Mississippi's state fossil is a fascinating one, prehistoric whales. In early whale evolution, not too far from the terrestrial wolf-like mammals that preceded them, wolves took on a much more serpentine form, looking closer to an old sea monster than modern whales. Bazillosaurus is the most popular representative of this early group of whales, and has a species found within the state of Mississippi. So they're my personal choice for Starkville's new mascot. Within the San Joaquin Valley, Fresno State resides within is the Morano Formation, a late Cretaceous rock bed housing both marine and terrestrial fauna, including ancient fish, hadrosaurs, and my pick for Fresno State's mascot, Fresnosaurus, one of four long-necked plesiosaurs found within the formation. In the rocks of northern Virginia lie the Manassas Sandstone, a Triassic formation dating back over 230 million years ago. Most of the remains found here are trace fossils, mostly footprints, with a set belonging to a prehistoric reptile known as Rutiodon, a 26-foot-long member of an extinct order of reptiles known as the Phytosaurs, a group famous for their crocodilian-esque body plan despite not being all that related to true crocodilians. Being one of the largest predators in early Mesozoic Virginia, Rutiodon is my pick for a more prehistoric JMU. For our final school, we have Louisiana Tech, where we encounter Louisiana's barren fossil record. Through a combination of constantly eroding land and, like Georgia, being underwater for most of Earth's history, the state has very few known fossil beds. Of the few prehistoric fauna found in the state, we have the Mastodon, a giant prehistoric elephant that roamed much of North America during the Pleistocene, my only real pick for Louisiana Tech. It's unlikely that we'll ever see prehistoric life in major college sports, and while it's interesting, it's also understandable. We're just too late for it. And while dinosaurs are huge with younger audiences, it's a lot harder to get college-aged kids or adult alumni to identify with a stegosaur. But thanks to Empire, we can kind of get an idea as to what some schools might look for in the future when it comes to prehistoric mascots. By the way, be sure to subscribe to Empire while you're here. He's recently released a video on the history of Stanford and Cal's rivalry, and there might be something eggy coming down the pipe as well. As always, be safe out there. I'll see you next time.